Hey guys, it's Eric with Trimble. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to set up a tripod. Uh, try and give you a couple pointers and tips, let you know how I do it. Not necessarily the only way to do it, but it's, it's one way to do it. So the first thing we want to do is we get a tripod here. It's a Trimax tripod. It's made out of uh, composite fiberglass. That's very important. You don't want to use a wooden tripod or an aluminum tripod because they are not engineered for our robotic total station system. They are going to transfer too much uh, energy and vibration from the job site up into the robot. It's going to start vibrating at you and that's going to be a bad thing. All right. So the first thing we want to do is we've got some set, set screws down here at the bottom and we've got the paddle levers. My set screws are loose, so I've got free movement. I'm gonna undo my paddle levers, and the first thing I'm gonna do is just kinda of lift this thing up, give it a little bit of a shake. And the height that I'm going for is right to your chin, and then now I'm gonna take these levers and lock them down. This is temporary, just to get me to where I can get to rough level. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spread the legs apart on this tripod. And they need to be at least three feet apart. The reason for that is if they're any closer than that, the instrument's going to start vibrating. That's a bad thing. All right, now that I've got this about three feet apart, I'm going to go ahead and step on these things and put them into the ground. One thing to note is if you're setting up and you've got two different surfaces, for example, a sidewalk and dirt, make sure you set all the legs on the same exact surface, all in the dirt, all on the sidewalk. Another thing is you don't want to set them up on asphalt. Asphalt, as it heats and contracts, is going to be really cause this instrument to, to get out of level. All right, so now that I've got this in, I can see that I'm a little bit off, and this is why we have these uh, paddle levers. So if you take the paddle lever here, you can adjust it and scoot this thing down and try and get it somewhat level. Just eyeball this. Some guys throw a torpedo level up on there, but after a while, you're going to get so good at it, you won't need it. I need to scoot this down just a little bit here. All right, I'm going to call that good. Okay, so here's my robot. I've got an RTS here. I'm going to go ahead and set this up on top of here. So one of the things you're going to notice about this instrument is there's a level bubble on here, all right, and there's a bell housing here. You want to make sure that that bell housing goes into the bottom of your instrument. Always making sure to hold on to the instrument. You don't want that thing to take a tumble because your boss is going to be really mad at you. All right, so now I've got this um, tri brack on here with my instrument. There's a little groove cut into this post, and I want to make sure that this dial is exactly level with that. That's going to give me the most uh, room to level this thing up and down. Okay. Now, normally, I would leave the instrument on um, to level this thing, but there's a level bubble on here, and just to make it a little easier for this video demonstration, I'm going to take the instrument off. So I'm going to unlock my, my locking lever here. I'm going to take the instrument off. I'm going to set this in a safe place, back in your case. I'm going to rough level this thing. We've got this level bubble, and it's on the wall. You see that? Now, I want to get that off of the wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a lever that's either equal or opposite to that bubble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo this lever and I'm going to use this to adjust it up and down. And this level bubble, what it's going to do is it's going to start running along the outside of that wall. I'll try and do it nice and slow so you can see it. And it'll go round and around if you let it. But what I want to do is I want to stop that bubble opposite this leg over here. Okay? So now that that bubble is opposite this leg, lock the lever back down, okay? And now come back up here so you can see this bubble. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to the next lever. I'm going to loosen it up, and this bubble should jump right across the top of that instrument, or excuse me, right across that glass. So I'm going to do it again just nice and slow so you can see it. See it's going to come off that wall and it's by no means perfect and that's okay. That's good enough because now what we're going to do is we're going to put that instrument back on top and we're going to use the precision and the 
firmware and the screen on the instrument to go ahead and take us to our final part. But now we have the tripod and we've got the tri-brack rough leveled. So now we can go to those, address those set screws and now we can lock these things in. And make sure you do this. Don't just count on these paddle levers because as these tripods get broken in, those paddle levers have a tendency to slip if you don't do these set screws. So the set screws are done now. This thing isn't going anywhere. I can go ahead and grab my instrument and I can set this guy on top. Now, there is a, a comms port and a 12 volt notch that needs to match, excuse me, a bump that needs to match the notch in the tripod or tri -brack. So I'll go ahead and do that. Set that guy back in there. Make sure you lock this thing down so it doesn't take a tumble on you. And now we've got this thing rough level. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna power this thing up. I'll go ahead and grab a battery, throw that in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit the power button. Now, one thing you need to be paying attention to is you want Trimble to be readable. You don't want it upside down. This is called phase two. That's not good. You wanna be in phase one. All right, when you power this thing up, you'll see the Trimble globe you'll see a countdown in the bottom right hand corner. When that hits zero, it's going to basically say waiting for connection. It's going to tell you channel your network ID. Before that hits zero, you want to hit the enter button. If you missed it, that's okay. Just tap the power button again, like so, and it'll start that countdown all over for you. Okay, so now it's starting to count down. I'm going to hit the enter button. And now we go to the digital level bubble screen. Now to make your life a little bit easier, one of the things that I do is I turn the instrument so that my screen is right over top of my one of my dials. So now what I can do to level this thing is I'm going to use the digital level bubble and the electronics of the instrument. In the upper left hand corner it says 1 to 250. We actually have four levels of sensitivity. 250, 100, 10, and 1 to 1. You'll never use 1 to 1, but we start here at 250. Now, some guys use thumbs in and thumbs out to adjust these knobs. I don't do it that way. Um, I just use them one at a time, left or right, and then I use this one here to tilt, do my, my forward and back. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this thing down. You see my level bubble starts to move a little bit. Once it gets inside the circle, I'm going to call that good, and I'm going to hit the down arrow, which drops me down to the next sensitivity level, um, 1 to 100. I'll repeat, scoot that down, and I'm going to use this knob to scoot that bubble over, and then I'll scoot it down again. So this is just a matter of walking that bubble in. Once you get it inside, you can drop down again, 1 to 10. This one is very sensitive. A little twist goes a long way. All right. Also, I should note, it is an analog dial with a digital bubble. It does take just a split second for it to catch up. So one of the habits that I've gotten into is I give it a little twist and I put my hand down by my side so that way I'm not just twisting to tighten this thing down too far and that bubble will completely pop off the screen. If the bubble pops off the screen, that's okay. We can cycle through again to get back to 1 to 250, 1 to 100, and then back down to 1 to 10. I've got a little bit more work to do. I'll give that a little twist here. And then I'm going to go ahead and just scoot that guy over just a tinge. And that level bubble should be 100% perfect right in the middle. Okay. Now, you may notice that your tri -brac, uh bubble is not perfect. That's okay because tri -bracs need to be calibrated every once in a while. There's set screws on the bottom of here. Don't worry about that. What you need to worry about is, is that bubble in the middle. Once you do that, um, then when you turn on the instrument, uh, the, the software is always going to tell you that you're right on the money. One other thing I forgot to mention, and this is more of an advanced um, uh, point, if you're setting up over top of a known point, which luckily in our Trimble FeedLink software you don't have to do, but if you are, you can use this optical plummet. Basically what this is, is a, uh, it's kind of like a little telescope that looks straight down at the bottom. And to operate this thing, this moves in and out, and that's how you're going to get your focus.
And what I do is I'll stick my boot underneath the center of the tripod so that when I look through, I've got something to focus on. So you slide it in and out to focus, and then you can twist this dial here to fine tune the crosshairs and get everything in focus. If you're not exactly over your point, you do have, you can untighten this, you do have a little bit of movement here to try and dial it in, but what you do not want to do is have this thing hanging off the side. That's bad. So you want to make sure you're as close to the center as you can and over top of that point and then make sure you tighten it back down. Now in doing so I've messed my thing up a little bit. Again, just rinse and repeat. You adjust the dials and get that thing back in. Once you're done, you've got two options. You can hit the enter button or you can hit the pre-exit button. You want to hit the exit button. It goes back into your countdown and at this point you're going to let it count down all the way to zero. When it's done, the instrument is going to, excuse me, the, the robot's going to say um, uh, waiting for connection and it tells you your channel and your network ID. At that point, launch your Trimble Field Link software, tell it what device you're connecting to, punch in your network ID, uh, excuse me, your channel and your network ID, and you're good to go. So, hope this video helped and uh, happy trembling.